He missed it. He should have scored. A Mexican flag, I believe. Oh, it's not a Mexican flag. It's a sort of poncho thing is on me because it's Mexico's day. They won gold, a glorious, glorious gold. And as for Brazil, well, maybe they'll get another chance to win their first Olympic gold in four years' time. Okay, we're back, but that would appear evident, wouldn't it? Equipo que siguen en pie de lucha para lograr una medalla. Bueno, pero vamos al agua. No nosotros, eh. Igual no. con el día. And swimmer Rebecca Adlington has done Team GP DB GP B proud tonight. Look at the way Nastia can just take that slender athletic body and bend it. It's time for you to get the news, travel, and weather where you are. Cyclists are programmed for victory, so it's easy to understand why Cavendish was so upset in the face of defeat. Was Tour de France tiredness a factor, perhaps? No, stop asking no. stupid questions. No. Do you know what that's like? No. No. Yes, just five days to go before the opening ceremony and the, the Olympic flame makes a very poignant stop here in South London with Doreen Lawrence, mother of murdered teenager Stephen. You're going to be carrying it from Lewisham to Wandsworth today? Yeah. <laughs> no. لم تستحي مقابل الدقائق الدقائق الأولى من هذه المباراة اللهم أني صايب The Sochi Winter Games right here We've got a polar bear, a leopard and hare entertaining our guests We may have to take out a restraining order on the polar bear with Natalie He's been staring at that <laughs> little uh, diplomacy at work yes. here. <laughs> he really likes our nap. Uh, Mishka was dubbed the nightmare yeah. bear on Twitter, and some have compared him to the I'm Miley Cyrus bear. of twerking bears. Yeah. The first hour is going to check of the weather. Okay, let's show you what we've got going for you. Start with today. Wow. Uh, we've they got to risk of some They're twerking. They're, what's, that's just not right. Oh, I want to say you were a bear. <laughs> she outed me. Hey, 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 hey. Keep your paws over there, bear. <laughs> no, no, no. Not and that's what's no, going no. on around the country. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. He did it to us again. He did it again. He does it every four years. Bob doesn't know that 12 o'clock means 12 o'clock. It doesn't mean 12.02. It doesn't mean 12.04. It certainly doesn't mean 12.07. Bob, when it's 12 o'clock, you say goodnight. You don't care because you're sleeping right now. And in the morning, you'll wake up with your strawberries and cream as your five-star. Bob, we're here on the East Coast working hard for you. We're NBC family, Bob. You tell them. 12.07. Does not work for us. I'm glad we had the little gymnast girls. I'm excited about it. I'm glad we got to interview Michael Phelps six times. But Bob, 12 o'clock, and he's just starting. It's just starting. You watch. Mark my words, Jacksonville. Tomorrow it'll be 12:09, 12:10, 12 o'clock. He starts to push it. That Bob does. I'm done. I love him though. It's great. It's a great broadcaster. And the question is, how do we now keep it all going? What are we, how are we going to keep the momentum of the, of the Olympics? And what else do we do now? I think we just, I think we just have an orgy of, of an orgy of, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 an orgy, an orgy of national, an orgy of national congratulations and thanks. Men's golf is going to be played for the gold medal at the Olympics. That hasn't happened since 1904. The sport returns. Women's golf will be played in a couple of weeks at the gold medal here at the Olympic Games. But in the sport of golf, a very historical moment has just occurred live on Golf Channel as Jim Furyk, one of the six men to shoot the low score in PGA Tour history, 59. But there are some young African-American girls out there who tonight are saying to themselves, hey, I'd like to try that too. More from London in a moment.
His entire life has been leading to this moment. All the hard work, the dedication, just to answer the call. The call of victory. Finally, the Olympics provided another impressive opening ceremony with the Rio Games kicking off last night in Brazil. But it was one man who stole the show. Tongas, Tongas, uh, Tonga Pita Talfut Tafua. <laughs> That's having a tough one with that one. Bearing performance included burying his chest in plenty of baby oil, leaving the commentator speechless. Today, his Instagram account climbed from a few thousand to almost 52,000 followers. So, what was yeah. his name again? I'm kidding. I'm not going to put him through that because it was, it was like Super Cal Project yeah. Listen. That's a very interesting entrance very there. Very interesting. えっと、最後の直線で仕掛けたのは、仕掛けた最後の直線勝負になったのは、あれは初めからの戦略なのか、それとも偶然なのか教えてください。おやだ、ちょっとやだ。We <笑> both played badminton and it seems like the rules are fairly easy to understand. I think there's a big difference though in the equipment that these guys use and the ones we use at home. This is a typical racket that you can buy. And it all comes as part of a set. You get the net, you get a couple of rackets, you get some birdies, right? And this is an okay racket, but compare it with this one. This one, this one is, costs about 75 bucks, but it can run you up to about $200, okay? And it's a little bit bigger than the kind that we might goof around with in the backyard. Listen to the difference in tension, though. This is, this is the one that we play with. This is one that bad boys of badminton play with. So obviously they're going to be able to hit the ball a little bit harder. It's a much more precise piece of equipment. But here's where the big change is. This is the shuttlecock that's used at the Olympics. And maybe you've been hearing Bill Clement describe this thing. 16 goose feathers. I mean, this is a beautiful piece of equipment, but it's, it's fragile, but it's also very strong. All from the left side of the goose. I'm not making this up. So that the contours of the feathers are all the same, and it gives a uniform ride. This thing can go up to 200 miles an hour. You cannot tell me that the birdie we use at home, this thing, you can lean on this as hard as you want. This thing isn't going 200 miles an hour. It's not. And even though it doesn't look sophisticated, it has a tree-seeking device implanted in it somewhere. I don't know where, but I've played a lot of badminton with my kids. By the seventh shot, this thing's up in the tree, okay? So then what does your kid do? She says, Mommy, I'll get it down. Throws a racket up in the tree. Now your racket's up in the tree. She says, don't worry, I'll get that down. So now your kid goes into the garage and goes and gets the red rubber ball, which should come as standard equipment in any kind of backyard band, badminton set. Throws that in, that immediately gets impaled. So she goes to get something else to get, the bet, to, to get one of these things down, okay? Now there are kids from all over the neighborhood that have come into your backyard and they're emptying out your garage, throwing stuff at your tree, all right? You realize suddenly you own 18 basketballs. You've got nine footballs, okay? There's softballs flying through the air. The tree is now groaning with children and equipment, all right? Someone's turned on the hose. Badminton is a water sport. They're trying to get the, this thing down with the hose. And somehow, mothers from all over the neighborhood hear that badminton is being played at Mary's house they're dropping off their kids. They know it's an all-day affair. They know it's going to involve 17 other sports. They're dropping off their kids. They're leaving skid marks, okay? You've got Colleen Clark up in the tree trying to get down a SpongeBob SquarePants beach ball with a hockey stick, okay? There's pool sticks flying through the air like javelins, and you hear yourself saying, somebody's going to poke an eye out. It just never ends. It's a what? Everything is going on, right? Then you see Christopher Burr, and it's always Christopher Burr. He takes a rollerblade, throws it up at the tree, hits your car, you got a dent in your Jeep. You realize you better get your Jeep out of the way, and you also realize that for the first time in seven years, you can actually pull your car into the garage because there's no sporting equipment there anymore. Not even the inflatable raft that hasn't seen action since the baby duck rescue of 1997. You pull your car into the garage, and as you do, your other kid is coming out. He's on the phone with R.T. Murphy. He sizes up the situation and says, hey, come on over. We're playing badminton. That is a sport that I know, and that's probably a sport that you know as well. Olympic badminton is coming back after this. 
Yeah, I think this is going to work out just perfectly. So let's do this. Let's take you to Copenhagen right now, where we're about to get an announcement of the first city outs. Let's have a listen. The city of Chicago, having obtained the least number of votes, will not participate in the next round. Chicago is out. Chicago is out. Chicago is out. Let's get AD mic'd up here. We shall now proceed immediately with another round of vote. We Madrid shall is still in. Tokyo is still in. Wait a minute. We shall now Chicago is out? I'm not exactly sure how to introduce this one. I'm here with a couple of guys who are with the Canadian Olympic demonstration hide and seek team. Now, it took me quite a while to believe that this was actually true. But uh, what did you say that the other country called this? Well, in, in China, you know how table tennis is called uh, ping pong, uh, and it's called table tennis normally. Well, this, this is actually an ancient Chinese game uh, called Lodong. And you actually play this as an Olympic demonstration sport? Well, in the, in the Beijing Olympics, it's 2008 Olympics in Beijing, it is a demonstration sport. That is correct. And is this something you guys do for fun, or is this like a profession? Profession. Really? We make money at it. We don't, but we like to. <laughs> so is this something that they also do in the United States that we just haven't heard about? Uh, the States started a team, but they never went through with it. It's, it's a lot of smaller countries. Biden has been serving in the Senate since 1970. All right, thanks, Lester. Now it's time for the women's 5,000-meter run. Messer up to... to the... I got over the hurdles. Like, shit, I can see the girl pass me. How much does your life change? Because Rebecca Allington, young young girl, quite a promising swinger, uh, swimmer, to suddenly... <laughs> sorry, yes. Swimmer, to suddenly... <laughs> Can you leave? Can we just leave? Come on. Very promising swimmer to suddenly a household name.